All right, now, today we are starting a new series called, and it's on your folder there in the bulletin, uh, Naturally Supernatural. Naturally Supernatural. And we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. And on June 4th, when we read, uh, recognize all our graduates, that is what the church recognizes us on the calendar as Pentecost Sunday. And Pentecost Sunday is the birthday of the church. The church was born... Uh, on Pentecost. And uh, the, what happened on Pentecost, it's a, it was a Jewish holiday, uh, and on that particular holiday, after Jesus rose from the dead, he came back, he appeared to his disciples over the course of 40 days, and he was in his resurrected body, he still had holes in his wrists, and uh, holes in his side, and holes in his, in his feet, uh, or scars, I'm not sure you know what it looked like, but they could tell that it was Jesus. And he had these scars because he told Thomas to look at him and to put his hand in, in the holes in his body so that he would believe. And so we, we know that he had, he had the scars. And by the way, uh, those scars will last eternity because it is God's sign of his covenant love. For you. So that is Jesus' resurrected body. When you get to heaven uh, and you see Jesus face to face, you will also be able to see the scars. And your resurrected body won't have any scars. But his will. It's the, it's the eternal covenant love of God for you. An eternal witness of how much God loves you. Isn't that awesome? So you will be able to do that too. Just thought of that. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be cool. And so anyway, on, on, on Pentecost, Pentecost was 50 days after the Passover. And so Jesus was, uh, uh, he ascended back into heaven 40 days after the Passover. And he told his disciples to remain in Jerusalem until they received power from on high. To receive power from on high. He says, you're going to receive power from on high. And when you receive this power, when you receive this Holy Spirit, and he taught about it many times with his disciples. So they knew what he's talking about. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you're going to receive power from on high. And then you will be empowered to be my witnesses. And you will be my witnesses that I am alive. And, and that power... From, from on high, is going to be in you and with you, the Holy Spirit. And so they waited and waited, didn't know exactly when, but it was 10 days later, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came and filled the believers. You can read about this in Acts chapter 2. And that's when the church was born. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in the languages of, of the nations around the world. And all of the Jews from all these different nations had gathered for this pilgrimage festival in Jerusalem. Three times a year, Jews from all over the world would come back to Jerusalem uh, to, to honor these special festivals. Passover, uh, and the Pentecost, and then Tabernacles, which is a, a later one. So they were here from all over the world. Some from different countries, and they spoke different languages. And all of a sudden, the, the Holy Spirit came upon the believers, and they began to speak... In, tongue, in the languages or the tongues of the different languages that these people were from. And they could hear their language being spoken. And then, what is going on? They are speaking. Aren't these guys, aren't these guys from Jerusalem? Aren't these guys like from this area? You know, don't they just speak Greek or Hebrew or whatever? But they're speaking my language. And they're all speaking with, without knowing that language. They were speaking the praises of God. I believe they were also proclaiming the gospel. And, uh, and it goes way back to when God gave out to Moses, he gave out the, uh, the Torah. Uh, there is a rabbinic tradition that when God spoke to Moses the word of God, that it was spoken in the 70 languages of the world. And so it's a throwback to the, when God originally gave his word. Now he is revealing his word in us. He's writing his word in us through his Holy Spirit. Okay, so now, all of that to say, and I didn't know I was going to say all that, but... All that to say that Pentecost is known as the birth of the church. This is when uh, 3,000 people initially, outside of Jesus' believers, Peter got up and preached a message that day, and 3,000 people uh, gave their lives to Christ and believed in Him as Savior. And the church took off, and the world has never been the same since. Okay, so that is when it all began. That's when it went from Jesus' ministry to the church's ministry. Okay, so Jesus gave up his spirit to us so that we could continue to do what he was doing and we could say what he was saying. And so now the Bible says that we, the church, are his body on the earth and his spirit is in us. 
Okay? And this is when it all started. It's in Acts chapter 2. But the, the church was born on that day, and it was born when the Holy Spirit was poured out on, on, on the disciples. And since that day, the church has been characterized as the people of God, housing the presence of God on the earth. Okay? That's who we are. We're the people of God, housing the presence of God on the earth. We are His body, and the work of the church is not natural. What we do is supernatural. It's a supernatural. A lot of people uh, are trying to fix uh, uh, problems in their life or problems in our culture. And the problems that we're trying to fix are not natural. They're supernatural. It's a spiritual issue. It's not always a natural issue. So the church's business is spiritual. It's supernatural. Okay? Nobody can uh, change a life like God. But you can't do it. The Bible says, you know what, you can know all the Bible, you can know all the verses, you can say all the right things, you can do all the right things, but you can't save anyone. You can't. Your words can't convince anyone either. It's the Spirit of God that draws a human heart back to itself. It is supernatural. It's supernatural. But there's some natural going on. Like someone's got to open their mouth, someone's got to say something, and then all of a sudden, when the natural is is used, then the natural is us people right here, right? When we begin to do the natural in faith, God supplies the supernatural, right? And so that's why this is called naturally supernatural. If you guys give your natural, God will supply the super. So how many use of super in your natural? Okay. So we are we are the church. We are His body. And uh, so salvation is a supernatural event. Last week in the second service, we had two ladies um, who responded to the message of the gospel, and God drew their hearts to himself. And they came forward, and they gave their lives to Christ, and they were supernaturally born again. And their sins somehow were completely forgiven. And some, something happened unseen that broke off sin's power off of their life. And their name was written in a book that we've never seen yet, called the Lamb's Book of Life. And so all these things are happening uh, supernaturally. We can't we can't understand how these things happen, but but we are called to just trust in Him and let Him live in us and through us. So we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit for the next couple of weeks as we gear up for Pentecost. And uh, I'm asking you to open up your heart to receive the super, the super in your natural. Okay? Because that's when we come alive. That is who the church is. And that, that's what that's what we're doing. Is we are we are kind of a, a casing for the supernatural, this Holy Spirit to flow through. We're like the conduit. We're the we're the we're the, the Bible says we're the jars of clay. I mean we're made out of dirt. You know, God fashioned us with his own hands. But the Bible says, but in these jars of clay, God has entrusted a treasure. That's right. And, and your, that treasure is his presence, his spirit lives in you. Even though you're a jar of clay and you can be broken and, and, and you're limited in, in what you can do and you don't look maybe glamorous and, and maybe you're not all powerful, but you have, you contain the, the presence of God himself, the most powerful, you know, he is the most powerful of all. And so the Bible says we're, we're jars of clay, we're humble, it's not us, and yet inside of us is this great treasure. The great treasure. It's His Spirit. It's His presence. And so, um, the church, it's people. We're people. We're very natural. We're very ordinary. But we can entertain and house and we can give way to the Holy Spirit of God in our lives. And that produces supernatural results. Okay? When you submit to the Holy Spirit in your life, the super shows up in your natural. And great things happen. People's lives are changed. Your life is changed. Uh, it's just phenomenal. And that's what the church is. That's who the church is. The church isn't people that just go to a building and give and serve and try to be good people. The church is the people filled with the presence of God allowing the ministry of Jesus to continue on the earth. Okay? So you're not, you can't do what you're called to do without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit being the, the very center of, of who you are and what you're about. That is what we do. That is who we are. 
Okay? And, and so 1 Corinthians 6, 19, we were singing the song about this a few minutes ago about let the praises fill this temple. Uh, the Bible says this, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? So the Bible says very clearly, you are now housing the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. You are now this temple. This temple isn't in Jerusalem anymore. It's not even there. Even when it was there, you know, uh, that was just a, a temporary place for the presence of God. Now the temple's gone, but since Pentecost, the temple, God moved his address into your heart, into your life. And he moved in. Yeah, this is crazy. It's crazy. Now, and I also always, when I talk about, you know, this idea that the Holy Spirit living inside of us, it's also the strongest evidence that your sins are forgiven. Okay, because the Holy Spirit would not move in to your life if you were alienated from God and filled with sin. So, the, I mean, you, there is no stronger evidence that you are really forgiven and cleansed of your sins than when the Holy Spirit enters into your life. Okay? Because God, God wouldn't have, no, no sin could come into God's presence. So God's presence isn't going to come into, into you unless you really are forgiven. That's awesome. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, We have this treasure, oh, I already read, uh, talked about this, in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God, it's not from us. Okay? So the church, understand what I'm saying here. The church is not powerful people, but a people infused with a powerful God. This is not you. This is who's in you. Okay? And our faith as people, um, like for instance, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they're not possessed by a person, a people. I can't say, I have this gift. Come over here and I'm going to give you this gift of healing. That's not, that is not biblical. I don't have any gifts. All those gifts belong to the Holy Spirit. They're called the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so I don't own any of those gifts. But I can be an avenue for the Holy Spirit to give out the gifts that He has. And so He has all kinds of great gifts for our world. To set people free. To demonstrate that Jesus is alive. And the kingdom is, is here. kingdom is here. And it, the kingdom not is just here, but it's within us. And uh, so signs and miracles and healings, those are not generated by you or by a person. They come from the Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father doing, or what I hear. I only say what I hear Him saying. And, and He relied on the Holy Spirit just so that you and I could learn that it's possible to do the very same thing. He didn't do things on His own. He relied on the Holy Spirit. Can anybody tell me, when did Jesus start His ministry? What, after what event in His life did He begin to start His ministry? Anybody want to shoot it out there? Baptism. After he was baptized. Right? And the Bible says when he was baptized, as we do here, he came up out of the water, and then the Holy Spirit came upon him in the form of a dove, like a dove. And the Father spoke from heaven, and Jesus was launched into his ministry. Now, if Jesus was baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, and then he began his ministry, how do you think uh, that maybe that's how it's going to be for you? Okay, and let's just think about this. If Jesus didn't do a single miracle in his life until after he was baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, then maybe we need the Holy Spirit in our lives too. Okay, and that is exactly my point. Is Jesus relied on the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who has the power of God. Ephesians chapter 1 says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and listen to this, his incomparably great power for us who believe. We got any believers? All right, incomparably great power for us who believe. The power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead, seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion in every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. So that's why I often pray, Lord, I thank you that the same power that raised Christ from the dead now lives inside of me. Now lives inside of you. Because God just said it. This incomparably great power is for you. It's in the form of the Holy Spirit. Okay? 
Uh, Zechariah 4, 6 says it's not going to be by might, uh, man's might. It's not going to be by power, man's power. But by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Okay? This, all of this comes from the spirit of God. The spirit is the presence and power of God on the earth. He is the, the presence and the power of God on the earth. Our faith is not going to be because we're saved and uh, now I'm this great Christian and now I'm going to do these great things. No, that's not, that's not accurate. Our, our faith is not in ourselves. Our faith is in how awesome God is and what God wants to do in us and through us. And so I wanted to share with you uh, in this series about, about the Holy Spirit. And uh, all throughout the scriptures we see that the people of God are the means through which God works to establish His will on the earth. All throughout Scripture, story after story after story, of how a person offers their natural selves, or their abilities, or their resources to God. And God takes that natural, and He adds the super to it, and His will is established on the earth. He decides to partner with us. And so, we as a people our seat can be submitted to the Holy Spirit because that's the key for God to work in us and through us. So if you provide the natural, God will provide the super. Okay? All right, so here's one story, one of our favorite stories of all time, right? David and Goliath. He was a man of faith in God, not in his own abilities. Now you know from, from David's life that David tells others in, in preparation with this big battle with Goliath, he said that he, he had taken down a bear, and he had taken down a lion, and God had given him this bear, God had given him this lion, and uh, I don't know about you, but that's pretty awesome uh, accomplishment, right? To take down a lion, to take down a bear, and he said he did it with his own hands. That's like he wrestled a lion to death. <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, he had some abilities. And uh, this is what David said to the Philistine, okay, to Goliath. He said, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And also, those gathered here will hear, uh, here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. Now, David was a shepherd, and he, he, was, he was just visiting his brothers at this, you know, at the, at the army front line, the battle lines. And he had no business being there. He wasn't trained to be a warrior. He was a shepherd. A shepherd. And, uh, and but, I don't know about you, but I think I was thinking about this the other day. Like, what was David doing all day long out there with the sheep? I mean, I was in Israel. I saw the land. It's pretty boring. Uh, I saw Bethlehem. That's where we think David was shepherding in that area, just south of Bethlehem. And they had caves. And a lot of times they're telling the stories that the shepherds would pull their sheep into a cave and just sleep in the cave with their sheep at night. I mean, this is like a 24-hour, seven-day, you know, kind of a, a job. I mean, they would just live with their sheep, and they would wander around, and they would lead them to water, and lead them to grass, and just kind of take care of them. But, I mean, it, it sounds pretty boring to me. Okay, I don't know about you, so I'm thinking, what was David doing all I think David, we know a couple of things David was doing all day long. He was writing songs, and he was singing songs and worship, because we have all the psalms, uh, from David. most of those psalms were written by David, and he was a great musician, so I think he had his little guitar out there, right, and he was playing music, and the sheep would gather around and, you know, sway back and forth looking for something, <laughs> and he would try out songs on the sheep, and if he got a good reaction, he'd write it down and record it for us, you know, but I also think he also had a slingshot, we know he had a slingshot, that's how he took down Goliath, and I think he spent a lot of time out there, just like playing games and like practicing his craft and like, let's see if I can hit that, you know, that rock over there. And he's just, he's just horsing around, playing music, leading the sheep, writing songs, flinging stones. But you know what? I think David was really good 
at the slingshot. I think he was really good at uh, you know defending his sheep. He probably had a rod, a slingshot. But listen, he was really good. But did you hear what he said? He said, the Lord is going to give you into my hands. All right? Now, he had a natural ability, but he was not putting faith in his natural ability. This is, this is the, the lesson that we all need to learn. Is that, listen, it's not about you being a great person. It's about you humbling yourself to allow God to do what he wants to do. And David said, I've done all these other things, but it was God who gave the lion into my hands. It was God who gave that bear into my hands, and it's going to be God who gives that giant into my hands. And then he said it to the giant, and he says, everybody's going to know, Goliath, after I take you down, that the Lord is going to give you into my hands, and everyone here is going to know that the Lord does not rely on, on a spear or a javelin, but the battle belongs to him. Yes. Him. It's not you and me. It's him against you. It's not me against you. It's the God of Israel against you. And he's taking you down. And so he got the stones. He, he did his natural thing. But he was trusting in who? In God. He wasn't trusting in this slingshot. But he was taking the natural. And he tossed that stone. And God added the super to it. He fell the giant. That is living in the Holy Spirit right there. There's a couple other verses here in the Bible. It says, uh, 2 Chronicles 2015. The Lord was speaking through a prophet to King Jehoshaphat. And he says, Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours but God's. Anybody have a battle going on? Okay, again, your victory is not going to be natural. You need supernatural. Okay, God battles for you. So how do we do this? We need to have the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us, and we take our natural, we do what he's calling us to do, and we trust in him to add the super to it. The battle is not ours. It belongs to God. Uh, king Hezekiah said that the people of Israel who were under siege from king of Syria, greatly outnumbered, it was doomsday, they were in trouble, there's no way they are going to defeat this army. He said this to them, he says, there is a greater power with us than with him. With him is only the arm of flesh. He only has a couple hundred thousand army guys. That's all he's got. Just a couple hundred thousand. But with us is the Lord. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. So, the Bible shows us very clearly over and over and over again. You can have a huge army. You can have all the muscle, all the chariots, all the, all the spears. All the guns, all the people, but if you don't have the Lord, you're in trouble. Because all those armies that relied on their muscle and their power and their strength and their might, they fell to God. Now, you have Him. He's on your side. He's for you. He's with you. Let's just continue as a church to grow in our faith to rely on Him for everything. Everything. Proverbs 21 31 says, that the horses make ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. And so, though we are natural, we are carriers of the supernatural. And uh, even though this life, it's living, we're living in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, but this is our natural calling to live in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And God created us to be in this intimate relationship with Him and to learn how to rely on Him. So today I want to talk about what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Okay, as we start this series... Uh, it's important to understand the purpose of the Holy Spirit. The first time in the Bible the Spirit is mentioned is in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Okay, Genesis verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, verse 2 says this right here. says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. First time we see the Spirit mentioned, okay? So the Spirit is hovering over the waters. Now, I've said this before, but in the ancient world, waters represented chaos. So we have the Holy Spirit hovering over the chaos. There's formlessness, there's emptiness, and there's darkness, and there's chaos. Before anything began, this is what the situation was, and the Spirit of God is hovering over the chaos. And then what happened? What happened next? Then... God 
said. And everything started changing. So God says, God speaks the word, and guess what? Guess what happens? The Spirit of God is the agent of God to bring the word of God into reality. And so the Spirit of God who's hovering over the chaos, God says, let there be light, and boom, there's light. How does that happen? God spoke it, and the Spirit of God, the agent of God, the power of God, acted on the word of God and brought the will of God into reality. And so everything that was created was spoken, but God the Father spoke it, but the Spirit of God, the power of God, made it happen. Okay? And so chaos, the chaos was brought into order. We see within just one chapter everything beginning to get in its place. Emptiness was being filled with light. Darkness was enlightened, and the Holy Spirit was behind it all. Okay, so part of the purpose of the Holy Spirit, we'll see, is to take the Word of God and make it a reality. To act upon that word and bring it into reality. Okay? Spirit of God is the agent of God. It, it is God himself, but it is the part of God that is actually the activity to make things happen. Okay? So the Holy Spirit accomplishes the will of God through acting upon the word of God. Now, that's just part of the purpose. Now, I want to build on this, though, as we go through the scriptures. The prophet Ezekiel expanded this understanding to include us. Now we're talking not just creation, that creation was brought into order, enlightened, filled with purpose and life. But now the, 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 the prophet Ezekiel says that the Spirit's going to do something similar to us. So it says this, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you, Holy Spirit. I will remove from you your heart of stone. A heart of stone is pride. It's you know, self-righteousness. It's, I got this. It's, I'm strong enough, I'm tough enough, I, I'm going to make this happen. Uh, it's independence. It's a spirit of independence, okay? It's a hard heart. It resists God. So the, the Bible says God's going to take that hard heart out of us, and he's going to give us a heart of flesh, a heart that is moldable, coachable, you know, dependent, <laughs> submissive to God, okay? That's the heart we want, that's not, that's not the heart we're, we're, we're created with, uh, I mean born with, it seems, but that's the heart we want. And the Bible says, I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. So the spirit, another part of the purpose is not just to act upon God's word on creation, but to now begin to write his word on our hearts. We talk about that a lot here. Now the spirit is actually going to move you. He's going to move your heart to change, and to line up with God's will for your life. God's going to help your hard heart become soft. Now, how does that work? Well, it works through Jesus, right? When we become, become uh, saved, and we give our faith to, to Christ, and we're water baptized, when, that's, that's happening right now, right? Our heart, somehow God broke our heart from our self-centeredness, our self-reliance, self our independence, you know, all that pride. And we, we have to... Humble ourselves to be saved. We have to. We have to recognize Jesus is Lord. Amen. Right? That's a humbling, that's, that's a place where you humble your heart and, and your heart of stone is finally broken and you, you come to that place of humility that I need God. I need a Savior. I need Jesus. And I declare Him to be my Lord. Yeah. Uh, he's in charge now, not me. That's when that happens. But then the Spirit of God comes upon us and He begins to change us. Because it doesn't just happen like that. I mean, how many of you are still working on some things that God's, you know, that's working on? And, but He is, how many of you are making some progress? Do you feel like you're making some progress? Okay? And that, that's, that should be happening. And, and sometimes it's hard, but the Spirit of God is now with you to help you be who God made you to be. Okay? It's, it's so awesome that He gives us the Holy Spirit to help us. So He is doing that in us. So now, check this out. The Holy Spirit acts upon the Word of God in creation, but now He begins to act upon the Word of God in our hearts. And you are the climax of His creation. And the Holy Spirit is all about putting the will of God into reality. Put it into reality in creation. He's putting it into reality in your life as you allow Him to. This is awesome. Okay? And now, one further thing. In Colossians chapter 1, 
Uh, this talks about Jesus. It says, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in Him all things were created, things of heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through Him and for Him. All things. Okay? He is before all things. In Him all things hold together. And He is the head of the body. It's us, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, the resurrection. So that in everything He might have supremacy. In other words, so that He might be Lord of all. Top. Top. Supreme. For God was pleased to have all His fullness dwell in Him and through Him to reconcile to Himself all things. Everybody say all things. all things. So this is what God's doing. He's reconciling all things to Jesus, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through His blood shed on the cross. So all things have been created through Him and for Him. So the Holy Spirit, God speaks, and creation comes into order. Now God says, I'm going to not put my spirit inside of you and put things in order. Awesome. And then we get the fullest picture when Jesus comes and we start to understand, oh, this is all about Jesus. And, and God is reconciling all things back to him as Lord of all. And so the Holy Spirit's job, what he's doing, his purpose, is to make Jesus... <laughs> Lord of all. It starts in your heart, and he's going to work through you to establish Jesus' lordship over <clears throat> all. We know at the end, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that what? Jesus is Lord. So the Holy Spirit's purpose is to Help make Jesus Lord of all. So now he comes to, to you and to me. And uh, I, we're, we're kind of like a charismatic church. Okay? We believe in the Holy Spirit, but we also believe in speaking in tongues, which is what people refer to as a charismatic church nowadays. You, know, you guys believe in speaking in tongues? Oh, then you must be a charismatic Pentecostal church. Well, we do, but maybe not everyone here exercises in that gift. But that's not the purpose of the Holy Spirit. That's just, that's just a, a side part of, 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 of the tools that God has given us to, to live in victory. So that's not, see, a lot of charismatic churches, they get so focused on that one thing, like, you know, that one thing that some people don't understand that, and there's confusion. We're going to talk about that in the series a little bit. But the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to make Jesus Lord of all. Yes, that's right. It's the power of God in you and through you to establish Jesus' lordship. And he starts right inside of your own life. And then he works through you. And he's got all these gifts. We're going to talk about all these gifts that come from the Holy Spirit. Gifts of healing and prophecy and words of wisdom and all this thing. What is it all about? Is it so we can have goosebumps or we can like have like these weird experiences? No, it's not. It's not about that. It's about making Jesus Lord of all. Lord of all. He is in you. The same Spirit, okay, that Jesus relied on, the Holy Spirit, all that Jesus did, He did with the help of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so you're going to look more and more like Jesus. Because that's what the Holy Spirit does. Elevates the will of God on the earth, which is making Jesus Lord of all. And so, uh, where am I at? In the first verse of the Bible, and I've taught this before, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to break it down too much, but it goes like this in Hebrew. Bereshit, Barat, Elohim, et hashemayim, ve'et ha'aretz. That's the Hebrew, okay? There's seven different words in Hebrew in that first sentence. And in the middle word of the seven, and in the Bible, there's all kinds of significance to numbers and things like that. Seven represents completeness and perfection. And it's the first sentence of the Bible. It's about creation. And it says to me, okay, guys, listen up. Uh, this is the most important sentence in the Bible. Seven words. I'm going to give you the whole picture all at once, God says. And in the very center of this first most important sentence that describes everything of, that's about to happen is this little two-letter word, et. And it's aleph tav. It's the first and it's the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet. 
And Jesus later in Revelation said, I am the Alpha and Omega, which is the first and last letter of the Greek alphabet. But he would have spoken in Hebrew, and he would have said, I am the Aleph Tav. I am the center of creation. I am the center of perfection. And all of this is about me. And that's what Colossians chapter 1 says under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Paul is writing this out. He's like, all things were created by him, all things were for him. He's the center of it all. It's all coming back to him. It's all about him. It's about him being supreme. Jesus is Lord. There's no one bigger, greater, higher, ever. Jesus is Lord. And it's all about him. Isn't that awesome? So, the Holy Spirit is always going to elevate Christ in your life and in this world. And the full revelation of the purpose of the Holy Spirit is about Jesus. So when we see this verse here in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, and we're all very familiar with this, this verse, where it talks about the, the power coming out, Jesus is talking, and he says, you will receive power, and that word power is dunamis, that's Greek, for dynamite, right? You will receive dynamite power, explosive power. You're going to receive the power of God when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And what's the point? What's the point? Jesus says, and this is what's going to happen. And you will be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses. So what's the point of the Holy Spirit? What's the purpose of the Holy Spirit? To witness that Jesus is Lord. He's Lord. So all of this stuff about the Holy Spirit is about empowering us to actually continue to do what Jesus has done on the earth. And to see Jesus' Lordship established in our lives and to bring order into our lives, but also to extend that witness to others. And how many of you think it would be helpful to have some miracles once in a while to get some people's attention? Yeah. All right? I mean, that's what, when you look at the New Testament, man, it's just miracles, signs, wonders, great, great deeds that were going on. Was it the people? Was it the disciples? Man, would have been great to be an apostle. Man, I wish I was an apostle so I could do. You know, and, and some people think that was just for them. It was just those people. Those are really great people. Those are the people that, you know, hung out with Jesus. So they were special people. Well, they were special people, but you're special people. Right? right? And the, the point is, it's the same Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is God. It's God on the earth. It's the presence of God in, in his people. And the same Holy Spirit that came upon Jesus came upon the apostles. And it's come upon you. And he doesn't change what he does. So somehow, somewhere, there's, there's a gap in my experience. And I'm trying to explore that. God, I want to see more of those signs and wonders. Uh, not, not because, you know, because I want to have credit for it. Something like that. But because we need people's attention that Jesus is alive. We need the credibility that the kingdom is real. And, uh, and we are seeing miracles. We do have many testimonies in this room of people being healed and, and great things have happened. But I would like to just see more, more, more. And as we learn that it's not about us, it's about Him in us, I believe we're going to see more. I believe we're going to be better at just allowing the Holy Spirit to live through us. So here's a couple of things I want to close with about the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit lives in us. John 14, 17 says, Jesus is speaking, he says, he, the Holy Spirit, lives with you and will be in you. Okay? So the Holy Spirit lives with you and in you. Okay? You are his temple. John 14, 16, Jesus says, I'm going to ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor, the Holy Spirit, to be with you forever. Spirit of truth. So the Holy Spirit is with us forever. The Holy Spirit lives in us. And he will accomplish the will of God in us and through us. Okay? Uh, as I said in Acts 1.8, the power of the Holy Spirit is to help us witness that Jesus is alive. Acts 5.32 uh, says, we are witnesses of these things, the resurrection of Christ. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Uh, the Holy Spirit will teach us and remind us of Jesus' teachings. John 14.26, Jesus says... The Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. And so the Holy Spirit helps teach us and remind us of what Jesus taught. So as you study and as you learn and as you apply yourself to becoming a disciple, 
You see, the Holy Spirit will use all of that stuff. He will help remind you. He will help you learn it. And then when you're out and about and you need it, and you don't have this just in your hand, or you might have it on your phone, but even so, the Spirit of God will bring the Word of God to your remembrance when you need it. Because the Spirit inside of you wants to reach the person that you're talking to. It's not your job to reach them. It's your job to allow the Holy Spirit to reach them. Okay, so the Holy Spirit will, will give you words to say, a scripture verse, or, or an insight, or something, because God is wanting to, you're his body, right? God's in you. God loves that person. God wants to show that person he loves that person. And he will choose to use you if you're paying attention. Okay? That's how it works. We are his body. Right? We are his body. So that's why we have his spirit. To allow God to have some feet, some hands. And so we walk and we talk and we, we reach. But we're, we're, we're not trying to be impressive to people. We're trying to be submissive to the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit can, can speak and, and love and reach and do whatever he wants to do. Okay? All right. Um, so the Holy Spirit's going to do that. And also John 15, 26, Jesus says, When the counselor comes, when the Holy Spirit comes, whom I'm going to send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And so... The, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to always point people to Jesus. Always point people to Jesus. And not point people to uh, other people, but pointing people to Jesus. That's what the ministry of the Holy Spirit does. All right? Uh, John 16, Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to convict the world of guilt in regard to sin. Uh, I love Joseph Prince's teaching on this. What this means is that the world... When you're in sin, you need to know that you're a sinner and that you need a Savior. Okay? That's what you need to know. If you're in the world, if you're a sinner and you haven't accepted Christ yet, you need to be convicted of your sin, that you are a sinner, and that you need a Savior. And His name is Jesus. And Jesus died for you to forgive you of your sin. You need to know that. So the Holy Spirit convicts the world of their sinfulness and their need for Jesus. That's how we're saved. That we need to come to that place where we understand, wow, we've messed up. We, we're, we're a sinner. We're in trouble without a Savior. So the Holy Spirit convicts the world of their need for Jesus. All right? It starts with us understanding that we're sinners. Now, the second part of this, he says that he's going to convict, um, the, it says, the, the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. Then he explains it. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. So that's it's all about Jesus. You need Jesus. In regard to righteousness, because I'm going to the Father. So this is what the Holy Spirit does for a believer. If you're a believer, the Holy Spirit doesn't convict you of your sin. He convicts you of your righteousness. Isn't this awesome? If you're in the world, the Holy Spirit convicts the world of their sinfulness. And they get really, sometimes they get really mad. And they want to defend their sin. They want to hold on to their sin. And they want to argue about it. Because they, they want to be God in their own life. But at some point, they've got to come to the realization that they're in trouble. Their way isn't working. And it's a, it's a way of death. And there's a new path, a way of life. Choosing Jesus. Submitting to Jesus as Lord. Right? But once you submit to Christ as Lord, the Holy Spirit doesn't convict you of sin. The Holy Spirit convicts you that you're forgiven. Because Jesus is going to the Father, and he is at the right hand of God the Father, and he's interceding for you and for me right now. He's intersecting the accusations and the condemnation and the guilt talk that the devil's bringing to heaven. And he says it's covered, they're forgiven, they're forgiven. So you are forgiven. The Holy Spirit lives in you. That's the best proof I can give you, that you're forgiven. All of your sins are forgiven. Now let's get on with some righteousness, okay? That's the whole point. Right? So the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. The Holy Spirit convicts believers that they're forgiven. And the Holy Spirit convicts the devil that he's defeated. Judgment. That he is defeated. He no longer rules and reigns. All right? And his time is short. So I hope that uh, that this, this series will just fight a lot, just kind of like re-energize us for the Spirit of God. As we close the service, if the worship team can come up, I'd like to pray uh, just for you 
to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the power of God. Listen, I don't know if you're tired of like struggling in the natural, but uh, you weren't meant to live that way. You weren't meant to live based on your own means, based on your own energy, based on your own insight, based on your own effort, your own strength. Jesus said, come to me. He said, come to me. And, and the Lord has given us of his spirit to bring us the power that we need to live that life. So I'm, I'm challenging you, if you're just natural, you need some super to open your heart to receive the super. Okay, the power of God, the presence of God in your life. Would you stand with me? And uh, we're going to do a final song of uh, worship here. And as we're singing, uh, you know, I just want to just want to pray for us to just open our hearts and receive from the Lord. We're all facing battles, we're all facing challenges, but good news, the battle belongs to the Lord. And He's with us and He's for us. Let's go, let's go to the Lord in prayer here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you told us that you would send power from on high in the Holy Spirit. Lord, words don't even uh, do it justice to try to describe your masterful plan for our lives. We can't even, I just don't even comprehend it. It's uh, beyond our understanding. Your ways are higher than our ways. Uh, we're truth is hard for us sometimes to grasp in our limited thinking. We trust that you love us and for us. And Lord, we trust in your word. And uh, we thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit, your presence, to live with us and in us. Power from on high so that we could be fully alive and we could overflow with that, that river of living water, that life to this world. Lord, our world is in crazy turmoil, and it's hard for us to see uh, how things can turn. But Lord, you have turned our hearts towards you. We, we are determined, Lord, that you are still alive and powerful today, and that we are your people. We are the church of God. We are called out of darkness into your glorious light, and you have equipped us with everything that we need. To the name of Jesus, Lord. So God, I just pray right now, today, for each one here, that we would just have a fresh outlook on your Holy Spirit, and we would be filled to the full. Lord, we run out of our natural strength and abilities pretty quickly, but Lord, you have come to supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. Your very presence, your power is needed more than ever, Lord, on our, in our lives and in our world. And so, Lord, right now we just offer ourselves to you. We humble ourselves to you as your people to be filled to overflowing with your spirit. I'm going to ask that you pray with me and uh, my prayer is going to be that God would fill us with his Holy Spirit. And if you'd like to just Pray uh, this prayer with me. Just you repeat it with me as we as I say it. And uh, Jesus was teaching, and he said, "How much more if you, as, a, as an earthly father or even a mother, know how to give good gifts to your children? Uh, how much more does your heavenly Father want to release and give you His Holy Spirit? If you know how to do a good thing for your children, how much more do you think God wants to release His Spirit into your life?" And so Jesus was this is in the context of asking. And he said, you need, to, you need to ask him. When you ask him, he will give. He will generously give. And so we, Lord, come to you right now to ask and to receive. And as we do, and as we pray this prayer, Lord, then we think that you are generous to give all that we need and more than that. So that we can have the life that you taught us to have. So let's pray this together. Say, Lord, thank you that you promised. To send power from on high. To fill me with your Holy Spirit. And so I take you at your word. And right now, I ask for you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I empty myself of self-independence. 
of pride, of uh, self-righteousness, and I realize that I can't do it. I was never, I was never meant to do it. I need you. So I empty myself of myself to receive you. Holy Spirit, come. Power from on high, come. Fill my life, overflowing. I receive from you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. As we're going to sing, you guys go ahead and sing this final song. As we sing this song, I, I want to invite you in the context of worship to just continue to worship the Lord, to pray your own whispered prayers of God. Say, Lord, I need you. You know what I'm going through right now. I just turn these situations over to you. Lord, if you cross, you give me my prayer. Holy Spirit. So, Lord, I receive your Holy Spirit. Lord, I just energize me. Fill me up, Lord, right now. There will be no lack in my life. And if any issue in your life right now, you begin to turn it over to, to the Lord during the song. As we're singing worship, you begin to make this personal. You begin to turn your reliance to faith upon the Holy Spirit right now. Just begin to well up inside of your spirit, man, to strengthen you, to give you courage, to give you boldness, to give you wisdom. You give your natural, God will give the super. So we, we need to make this personal during this song. So if you want to come forward, come forward. If you want to stay in your seat, stay in your seat. But let's not leave this place empty or lacking. Because God promises to give of the Spirit generously to all who ask that you be filled with abundant life, with more than enough. So as we sing this song, that's my, that's my call to you today. is to make this person right now, to stir up the Spirit within you, to, to be filled up right now by faith before we go.
overflowing meat, filled with you, Lord, and flowing out life and bringing the Lordship of Christ into our world, into our neighborhoods, into our schools, into our places of work, into our friendships, into our, you know, just those God appointments with strangers. Lord, let your Lordship be evident to all. Extend your kingdom in us and through us this week, Lord. Let signs and wonders follow your people. Let us take your, your, your great authority and your power into, the, into, our, into our life this week and just trust in you. Trust in you. Trust in you. Look, at, look to you. Look to your power, not our power. And Lord, when people come to us this week, because you're going to draw them, when they come and they're needing something from you, Lord, let us just release, release your power into their lives. Let us release and just follow your leading, Lord, and pray for people, encouraging people. Let your word come to us. Let your power flow through us. Let them, let them find you in us this week, we pray. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And now may the Lord bless you, keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, give you peace in his name. Amen. Amen. Go power.